what I'd like to do is, is to delve into our tools that we can use. They're there for your use to accomplish your estate planning. Another tool that's very popular, it's called a prenup. If you're thinking about getting married, it's uh, particularly if it's second or third marriage, yeah, prenups are very popular. And a prenup is basically, um, I'm, I'm thinking about getting married. It's, uh, I want to have this agreement with my bride that uh, what I have, what I bring into the marriage is mine. What I make, my earnings is mine. I'm trying to create separate property. And by contract, you can do that. Before you get married, you sign this contract that says not just what I bring in, but what I earn is my separate property. And the same, same thing for the, for the spouse, for the wife. What she brought, brings in is her separate and what she earns is her separate. So we're trying to create two separate estates. We're trying to do away with community property. In the typical situation, the kids don't come into the mix unless, um, the kids are what we call four stairs. The kids would have an interest if, if the kids are four stairs, but that's kind of an unusual situation. Generally, just very generally speaking, the kids don't really enter the mix on the prenup. It's not a contract between with the kids. It's a contract between two spouses. If you don't have a prenup, what's going to happen? If you get married without a prenup, you might bring some separate property into the marriage, but if you, once you get married, presumably both spouses are working, let's assume. So their earnings become what? Mm -hmm. Community property. And when you have community property, the kids are going to have a claim or an interest when their parent dies. If you die without a will, if you die without a will, the parent that has separate property, that separate property is inherited by that spouse's children. Separate property passes down to the, sep to the, to the spouse's children, if it's separate property. And if it's community property, the, the, the parent of those children, their half passes down to the kids. So the kids end up with half of the community and 100% of the separate. Here's something that's that's fairly popular. Uh, say you have a husband and wife. They've been married for many years, and the husband has a lot of separate property. Say so there's maybe a little community property, but the husband is quite wealthy because of his separate property. And the, 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 the uh, spouses are up in age, good marriage. What the rich spouse sometimes want to do is to take his separate property or her separate property and convert it from separate and make it community. All right? So it's, it's something that it's pretty popular. And there's some good tax, there's some tax reasons that we'll discuss later why you may want to do that. But the husband, let's say the husband is a rich spouse. He can sign a document that will convert his separate property into community property. Once that conversion document has been signed, it's got to be filed at the courthouse. But once it's signed and filed, the separate property automatically becomes community property on 50-50 by the two spouses. Why would you want to do that? Number one, because there's one spouse that's probably feeling a little insecure. It may be convinces the other spouse to do it. That's one reason. But another uh, reason would be community property at the death of the first spouse, if it's community property, that property gets something called a stepped up basis, tax basis is stepped up to the fair market value, not just the deceased spouse's half, but both halves of the community property gets stepped up 
to the fair market value. Why is that so important? You should be asking yourself, what, what's, what, what's the big deal about that? If you sell property, you don't pay tax on the basis. If you have basis in property, you don't pay tax until you exceed the basis. Give you an example. Bought property years ago for $500 an acre. Let's say it's now worth $1,000 an acre. And I sell it. How much profit do I have? $1,000 less $500. My ba basis, my tax basis is $500. Sold it for $1,000. And I got $500 of profit in excess, whatever's in excess of basis is my profit. So I got to pay tax on $500. Before I sell that property, I die. My heirs come in, they've inherited this property, still worth a thousand bucks. But the tax basis used to be 500. That's what I bought it for. But it's now worth a thousand. My tax basis is automatically increased to a thousand bucks. That's what we call stepped up basis. The basis is stepped up to the fair market value. Then my heirs sell that property. They sell it for a thousand bucks. How much tax do they pay? Zero. 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 Why? Because it has automatically gotten that stepped up basis. And it's not just my basis, it's my spouse's basis also. Both halves, both halves of the community get stepped up to the fair market value. It's a tremendous, tremendous benefit that community property has over separate property. Okay, what happens when you have a spouse and, and children? What do the children inherit? The children inherit the deceased half of the community property, but subject to the surviving spouse's right of use for life or until remarriage. What else do the kids get? They get all of the deceased person's separate property. Okay? Very important. And here's a practical situation that I've seen happen several times in my practice. You have a husband and wife, community property, lived together for many years. They got some kids, good marriage. Husband dies without a will. But guess what? His, the home that the family had lived in for 40 years was the husband's separate property, okay? If, it's, if the home is his husband's separate property, dad dies, what happens to his separate property? Does the surviving spouse get a usufruct over it? No. She gets a usufruct on, over only community property. That home is separate, and it goes directly to the kids. The kids own the separate property outright. There's no use of fruct that mom has over that home that's separate property. And I've had several situations, at least three that I can remember right now, where the kids don't have a real good relationship with mom. And what do the kids do? They say, Mom... This is my separate, our separate property. We want you to move out of that house. And if it's the separate property, they can force mom out of the house. Okay. If you don't like that, what do you do? Most people wouldn't like that. What do you do? How do you change that result? With a will. With a will. Before dad dies, what should he do? He needs to prepare a will that will leave that home that's his separate property, leave the home, maybe to the kids, but give wife what? A usufruct over that home.